Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Diggy546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. All right, people. Um, nothing much to talk about here. I mean, at this point, that was a nail in the coffin. That was the nail in the coffin for the Giants season. Any chance they had at saving this season with their franchise quarterback is gone. It's just gone. Uh, it, it all kind of started to signal that this might be the end once that Andrew Thomas missed that, uh, you know, once Andrew Thomas wasn't on the field, we all saw that he was active for the game. People were celebrating, high five, and saying Andrew Thomas is going to play. Then I look out there, Andrew Thomas is standing on the sideline in full pads. Nate Solder, Nathaniel Solder, is, is, is at left tackle, playing left tackle. And at that point, I knew Daniel Jones was not going to be the same quarterback, first off, because he doesn't trust Nate Solder the same way he trusts Andrew Thomas to protect his blind side. Second of all, trust or not trust, the pressure is going to be right there. Now, I'm surprised that Daniel Jones didn't fumble the ball. I really am because that pressure was coming through. He was actually doing a good job of evading that pressure the entire time he was in there. The only thing is, he had pressure coming from other spots too. Matt Parrott was at right tackle, the center of the offensive line. Uh, they were kind of giving up pressure, so he was running for his life the entire time he was in there. Finally put together a decent drive. Kadarius Tony was doing his thing, getting up and down the field. DJ turns the corner, does what he always does, lowers his head, lowers his shoulder, clashes helmets with Jabril Cox, lands his head on the ground, and that's all she wrote for Daniel Jones for this game and maybe for the next week. I think that they are going to eventually bring Daniel Jones back. I don't think it'll be well advised for him to come back that soon, but I think he'll be back in the next couple of weeks, meaning he'll, I think he'll only miss one game or less. But the way I've been seeing these guys come back from concussions across the league, it seems like they rest these guys back really fast. So if DJ comes back and starts playing all hazy and starts throwing the ball all over the place where it doesn't need to be, you know why. Because he, he still got a concussion, still has, you know, some dizziness, some confusion, issues processing. That's just symptoms of a concussion. But um, the Cowboys, after that, they proceeded to just do whatever they wanted. Uh, I guess the defense, they would have done that against regardless. This isn't, you know, discrediting the Cowboys. Our only shot at winning that game as the New York Giants was to score points. Well, guess what? Kenny Galladay was getting locked up by, by Trayvon Diggs. but uh, when I after the game, I saw that Kenny Galladay did have a hyperextended knee in that first quarter, so that's probably why he wasn't getting open. And eventually, he just left the game. He said his knee was hurt. I'm not sure if Kenny Galladay, if his knee actually hurts. I saw him pretty much shut it down for the Detroit Lions last year and just not play the rest of that year because he thought they wouldn't be successful. I'm not sure if he's doing that to us this year. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, Galladay went ahead and got out of the game. Uh, Kadarius Tony pretty much took over, but the way that that offense was running, the way that that offense line wasn't protecting at all, specifically Nate Solder, it was no shot that the Giants would be able to get into a shootout with that team, especially without Daniel Jones. So he goes out, and I just completely forgot the fact that on one of the first plays of the game, Daniel Jones throws a slant, errant pass. You know why it's an errant pass? Because he's worried about his blind side. The pass is errant. Saquon Barkley is nonchalantly walking away from the play. And the dude steps on someone's ankle, steps on someone else's foot, turned his ankle, and he's going to be out for at least a couple of weeks. At least a couple of weeks. They say it's a low ankle sprain, which is a lot, a lot, a lot, a ton better than a high ankle sprain. So he should be back within two weeks. Same thing with Kenny Galladay. Rodarius Williams. Towards ACL. I mean, can we really, how can we, I just put out a tweet, how can we get mad at Dave Gettleman for these kinds of things? The entire team is injured. All of our captains are injured, besides Graham Gano and Logan Ryan. Jarrell Peppers wasn't out there, not like he mattered anyway, but the defense was even worse than ever. Uh, we were horrible against the run, no Blake Martinez, Dalvin Thomason being gone. Really, really hurt us. We cannot stop the run to save our lives. And I saw that coming. I really saw them being able to run the ball against us very effectively. Over 200 yards on the ground. 
they did whatever they wanted to on offense, which again, injuries or no injuries, I expect it to happen. Uh, but as far as the offense goes, you're missing your left tackle. You're missing your, the, the guard you started off, the left guard you started off with, with the year. You're missing your center that you started the year off with. So you're missing the entire left side of the offensive line. Can't operate like that. Cannot operate like that. The only bright spot from this game was Kadarius Tony. <laughs> That's the only bright spot at all. And, and you know I'm going to come out with a film session on him as soon as I get my hands on that all 22. But Kadarius Tony came out and did his thing. I mean, made plays after he caught the ball consistently. Made a couple of catches down the field, contested catches. That's what we've been waiting to see from him. He made one where he just kind of high pointed the ball. Another one where he just dove and just barely got his feet down. Kadarius Tony had a great game. 189 yards, pretty sure 189, uh, 196 total yards because he had that seven yard run. And we all know he would have gone over 200 receiving yards if he didn't lose his mind and try to punch someone who has a helmet on. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I love the fight. I love the fight for sure. I love the fight for sure. But I mean, why are you punching someone with a helmet on? I never understood that. Like, you didn't even try to rip his helmet off to punch him. You just punched the helmet. But uh, Kadarius Tony, he would have gone over 200 yards easily that game. There was no answer for him. And I don't really think there's an answer for Kadarius Tony in the league. He might see that answer next week because Kenny Galladay is out. Sterling Shepard may or may not be coming back. May or may not be coming back. But uh, I'm thinking that Jalen Ramsey might line up on Kadarius Tony a good amount, and that might be the answer for him. But against regular kinds of defenses, Kadarius Tony is unstoppable. That dude is a beast. That dude is a monster. Every time he catches the ball, he's making everybody in the world miss. They continue to, to talk about how many broken tackles and how many missed tackles he's causing. It's much more than the stat show. I mean, they say he only broke, he only made four guys miss last week. Or yesterday, that's baloney. That makes no sense whatsoever. But Kadarius Tony is the saving grace. The only reason that Giants fans will continue to come to this stadium is because of Kadarius Tony. And I just find it so funny how history repeats itself. 2017 all over again. And then you got a guy, young receiver. All the fans doubted him. All the fans said he's injured. Get him out of here because Giants fans love to talk about getting injured players out of here before they even play a snap. All these guys were talking about how Kadarius Tony was so horrible, just like the same way they did that to Odell. And guess what? He comes out and he looks like a beast, a monster. His first couple of games, same thing with Odell. Um, great after the catch, getting into on the field scuffles on the sideline, getting mad, standing up fast, <laughs> accidentally hitting Jabril Peppers in the mouth while he stood up. A lot of parallels, a lot of parallels, and I just do not want to go through the same trauma over and over again as a Giants fan. I don't. I hope that this time with this superstar, it looks like he's going to be a superstar wide receiver. I'm hoping this time we can get this done the right way. We can have the right coaches in place. We can have the right. We can have the right offensive line in place. We can actually take advantage of drafting a receiver that looks like he's going to be this good. I mean, we got him and future first round and third round picks. So please do not mess up this Kadarius Tony thing. That's all we have to look forward to, people. I'm just going to keep it real with you. I will still come out with the game previews. I will still break this down from an analytical football perspective. But at the end of the day, Kadarius Tony is why I'm going to be watching these games. At the end of the day, it's about entertainment. And the Giants make it really hard by not having entertaining football. And I'm so, so happy that we finally got somebody that can make the game entertaining again. Um, that That's all she wrote for this season. And this isn't me saying I'm not a Giants fan and I'm wrapping it up. And I ended my stream early yesterday. I actually popped over to the hub and, and Kid Blue's stream. It is really tough to get through these games, live streaming these games, when the team is just committing the same boneheaded mistakes. It, it is, it's really mind numbing. Like James Bradbury dro dropping that red zone interception, that pretty much got me out of there because the next play, guess what? Amari Cooper end zone touchdown. So I can't really talk too much about the game because it was all a haze after our two, you know, one of our, t basically two of our most important players got injured. Saquon out, DJ out, AT was already out. I already knew where that was going. 
So you guys let me know what you're thinking for the rest of this season. If you're excited about Kadarius Tony, we're done. We're, we're, we're done. But you guys let me know how you're feeling after this, what, our fourth loss of the season. Pretty much the nail in the coffin. And what is it? October 11th. We couldn't even make it to Halloween before our season is pretty much over. So much for the season that we were supposed to take that next step and become a playoff team. We made it this deep into the video. Come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily. And during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.